All right, guys, as I mentioned in the email that I sent to you, um, mind you, I'm recording all this before I do any of this, so I'm, I'm tricking myself temporally, but um, uh, I will release your papers as soon as this video is up. All of this will be current as you're watching it. Um, <clears throat> but along with that, I always like to talk to you guys as I'm releasing your papers, your grades, all that, all that noise. Um, I want to first tell you that you have a revision opportunity for this paper. This is listed on the syllabus, the due date. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. That's why the syllabus exists, but it is there. Um, the way that revision works for me, because some teachers do it slightly differently, uh, there will be a revision drop box on turnitin.com, same place we turn in all of our papers. Um, you turn it in there by the due date, obviously, uh, and it'll be just a new version of your paper. Um, I always recommend everybody revise. It is optional. I do not make you. Uh, however, it's one of those things, especially if at the end of the semester someone comes to me and they're like, ah, blah, 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 extra credit. I'm like, well, why didn't you revise, right? Like you, th this is a really uh, great opportunity for most of you, especially if you didn't get the, uh, quite the grade you wanted or whatever, there's another chance to take a swing. Uh, the way I handled the grading, uh, before we get into talking about revision itself, if you, um, if you do better on the revision, Five points better, ten points better. Um, on average, people do honestly about five points better, but every semester I have people who will do 10, 15 points better, something like that. Um, whatever grade you get, if it's higher, I just replace your previous grade with the new one, right? So here again, if whatever you got has bummed you out, that does happen, I understand. Um, this, is, this is your chance to, to make it better. Uh, and in some cases, make it way better. So I do highly encourage everyone to take advantage of that opportunity. Um, well, uh, oh, the last thing I'll say about revision before we look at this uh, student example real quick. I'm, I'm going to spend a couple minutes after this spiel I have uh, walking you through uh, just a student example that I think encapsulates some of the issues I saw in a lot of your papers. Um, but just before that, I also want to say... You guys often have kind of a goofy definition of what revision really means, um, and you will, well, I'll put it to you this way, the best revisions, the ones that tend to do better and, and even do much better, uh, they tend to, those students, rewrite whole sections of the paper, if not the whole paper itself. And I know, as soon as I said that, some of you may have just uh, closed the video, um, but here again, I mean, understand that when you built your paper, however you did it, whatever that process looked like, you built it uh, sort of organically, right? Like every part of your paper depends upon the other parts of your paper. So now if you're going to go in and try to surgically sort of just like fiddle with a couple little things, uh, the rest of your paper is still there um, and probably needs work along with those little things, uh, which is my way of saying if you try to just like take 15 minutes and just sort of slap a new coat of paint basically on your paper. Um, those revisions usually don't don't do much better, if at all. I mean, I will I will give you the same grade if it's basically the same paper. So things to know. Um, uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll remind you of this in class when we next meet. Uh, we'll look at the due date. You have a bit of time on it. Um, I, I do that intentionally. Of course, I also like to tell people if you decide to revise, which I think you should, uh, please bear in mind that we have work as we go as well. And you would never want to devote so much time and energy to a revision that you got behind on your other work. Uh, that's just counterproductive, right? Uh, so anyway, that's my spiel. Uh, I'm going to take maybe 10 minutes. I'm going to try to do it as quick as I can, as I always do. Um, and I want to look at this student example. This is one of your classmates. Uh, they wrote about Oldman playing basketball, obviously. Um, they're in the first line. What we have in front of us uh, is an introduction and their first body paragraph. <clears throat> now, I'd like to say before we jump in, um, not all of this that we're going to go over will apply to every student, but um, no paper was perfect, first of all. So there's probably something in here for you. Uh, and two, really, this is just a review. This is uh, here's what we have versus here's what we would like to have, basically. Okay. Number one, introduction. Uh, we have the parts, you know, and if, if at any point you need to pause the video to, so like, read a paragraph, feel free. 
Um, I'm going to just talk through it, uh, but I'll, I'll leave that business to you. Uh, we start with an introduction of the text, um, and then we pretty much immediately get off the rails. Uh, I saw a fair amount of you doing this, uh, and it's concerning, uh, first of all, because we never do this in class. Um, and there's different versions of this, but basically, uh, this student says, you'd expect the plot of the poem to be, I don't care what anyone would expect the plot. Why, why are we spending time on that? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you have any number of expectations when you meet a text. Um, that's not part of your argument. We're not interested in that. What are you saying about what the text is as opposed to what you thought it was? So we're just wasting time there and more importantly, wasting real estate like you only have so much time in these paragraphs to make an argument for me um, and that's that's chewing that up we run into another issue after that uh, I mean we spend a little more time talking about what the real meaning is again we skip right past that uh, we have a lot of quotations in this introduction um, now I mentioned this to pretty much everybody I think th that I saw do it but I just want to say it here um, the rule of thumb and I say it like that because you know there are exceptions the rule of thumb generally if it's not the hook somehow you probably want to avoid quotations in your introduction the reason for that is think about how we talk about quotations in class the level of detail I want you to go into uh, the level of care I want you to take when it comes to those quotations you do not have room in an introduction an introduction has to move much quicker because it's covering the entire paper um, and what ends up happening and we see it here with the I think it's three quotations in this introduction what ends up happening here is that these quotations end up speaking for themselves. Uh, to, to put that another way, you're sort of just slapping a couple lines from the poem in here, and you're saying to the reader, to me, you figure it out. And that is entirely opposite to what we're meant to do, right? Like, you're supposed to be making an argument, and you're supposed to be performing analysis, so I need to see your ideas, I need you explaining how those ideas work, possibly how they connect, or whatever. These quotations are just getting crazy in the way of that process. I would take them out. But here again, uh, I'm, these are great lines, and I think they tie into what this student is trying to talk about. Uh, but the improvement would be, well, just talk about it. Just tell me what you're thinking. We can get to those lines later in the paper. Um, we don't need to do it here. Once we get past all the quotations, I'm looking at uh, the, the parenthetical line 24, 25. Once we get past all that, Unfortunately, we finally start a little bit of analysis. Now look how late we are in the paragraph. All that stuff got in our way. This is the space we have left. It is not enough space. Now that said, what do we have? You know, uh, we still spend some time talking about what these quotations could be. Please, please stop doing that. Uh, and then we get to the speaker is somewhat obsessed with sex and is questioning his masculinity. That's an argument. Now again, the trouble is, because we don't have space, we have not explained how we've arrived at that idea. Um, again, I would, I would recommend not quoting the lines, probably, but you can talk about, I mean, what we're essentially talking about double entendre uh, in a lot of the poem. We're talking about suggestive language. We're talking about um, how the speaker is watching these guys play basketball, but he's very clearly phrasing his observations in a uh, sort of sexual way, right? You can say any of that. Um, and that's weird. Now, that's an observation. That's not really an argument yet, but that's where it starts, and that's kind of what we're talking about. And then from there, if you want to connect that to anxieties about his masculinity or whatever, you can do that. But you, you see already, like, that's a process that we have to start, and we're kind of starting it in this sentence here, and we are damn near out of room when we're starting that that's unfortunate um all of that is going to lead to uh, i mean their thesis is okay as it is um but i think it would probably be a bit more developed if we had more time to develop those ideas um or at the very least again we would explain those ideas in much more detail so that we get to the uh, when we get to the thesis it all just makes more sense right that's the introduction let's i'm gonna scroll just a bit oh no i'm not is going to let me? All right, sorry. I don't do the screen capture super often, so. All right, this body paragraph. Again, if you need to pause it real quick to read over it, go ahead and do that. I will give you like a beat here. Okay, so 
<clears throat> the body paragraph. Thinking about what we're meant to do in these body paragraphs, how they're meant to be constructed. Again, kind of, uh, we have the parts, you know, the three eyes that we're meant to have. But I would hope for most of you, it's super evident um, here in the very first sentence, we are off on the wrong foot. Um, at no point in this paper, in, in the process of building this paper, have we talked about outside sources, statistics, any of that stuff. Um, uh, I guess I'll, I'll give you another rule of thumb here, and this is just as a student. If, uh, if a prompt doesn't explicitly ask for outside sources, you are to assume that they are not, not only not necessary, but they're not uh, allowed, I guess. Um, so yeah, I, not most of you didn't do this, but I did have a few people that used outside sources, and I'm always really shocked by that. Um, it's just a wild thing not to know. Um, but again, if, if a paper says use sources, then you, you have to. And if it doesn't, then it's almost always don't. Um, so yeah, a, another way to put that is our topic sentence is off topic. And that's a real bummer. Um, now here again, uh, I think it obviously ties into the ideas they want to talk about. But the problem is we are starting from a place that's not in the text. And what that means is that we then have to work our way into the text. So again, the first two sentences, I suppose, um, we could probably lose because they're I, I get the second sentence is is getting there. But you see how it's building from that first sentence to the poem. Uh, when we get to this quotation, which is a good quotation, uh, they don't denote the line break, and that's a problem. Um, but we also don't have context for the line. I'd like to see that. Um, once we do all that, what do we do with the quotation itself? <coughs> We're kind of quick with it, right? Like, we say the speaker is skeptical. I'm not sure what he's skeptical of. I guess I, th I think they mean he's skeptical of the sexual ability of these old men. I mean, we could just say that. Um, it would, whatever we're trying to say, it would always help if we focus, like if we dug into the line more, right? What language are we maybe pointing to to make that observation? How are we supporting our claim? Uh, again, think back to how we um, sort of investigate these quotations in class. We're not doing that here. We actually move, if you notice, if you look at the quotation and you look at the sentence uh, following it, that's, that's our analysis, I guess. Um, after that, we say there are high expectations. We kind of immediately move away from the text. Now, again, I'm not at all saying we can't talk about those expectations. Uh, this student is basically uh, thinking about that whole narrative about how important sexual activity is to uh, masculinity and, and all that stuff. We can absolutely talk about that. I just, everything, I, I can't stress this enough, everything has to spring from the text. Every argument you make has to be supported with um, with these quotations. And we're so, so quick with them that any, anything you offer, which might tie in it doesn't tie in very well. Just we don't we don't have a, like a foundation, I guess, of analysis. Um, and you know it's a problem. <clears throat> and this is a tell that you guys will always give. I know you're not working enough with the uh, with the text when you do this. When you say another down here, another indication of the speaker. Um, I mean, you guys will phrase that in different ways. You'll say another example or or whatever. Damn near every time you do that, what you're telling me is. I didn't do a lot of work with that last thing because I've realized this paragraph is going to be too short. So I'm going to slap another example of a similar phenomenon right here. I'll put it to you this way. You can have multiple quotations in a paragraph. I mean, three at the most probably, but two is actually really good in terms of a limit. Um, but those need to be necessary, right? If you're making an argument and one quotation somehow proves your argument, whatever it is, you don't need another quotation that does the same thing. That you're repeating yourself, right? Um, if that quotation is similar, but again, like adds to your argument in some way, changes it somehow, then by all means, it, you know, maybe it should be there. Um, but here, what we are, what we are saying is, hey, this is the same. <sighs> okay. Um, 
But, you know, uh, importantly, it kind of is and kind of isn't. They even say in their analysis following the quotation, um, you know, that this, like we talked about in class, this sexual, uh, ugh, can't talk, sorry, this sexual act is a layup. She's easy. I think prostitute might be a little far, uh, but she's she's easy in some respect. Um, but notice, given uh, the construction of this paragraph, we had to work, first of all, to get to the poem at all. Uh, we already have a quotation that we spend a little bit of time with. All that, all that equals, um, by the end here, we don't have a lot of time for this last quotation. Um, now, granted, this paragraph is kind of short. It could be longer. But all of you, uh, whether you realize this or not, have a bit of a shot clock in your head. Uh, pardon the pun, basketball. But you, you have a bit of a shot clock in your head in regards to how long a paragraph should be. And it's funny, like, no matter what you're doing in a paragraph, when you start seeing that clock tick down uh, sort of unconsciously, you will end that paragraph. You will end it almost immediately. Um, and, and we kind of see that here. There's way more meat on this bone. Uh, for instance, um, what does it mean that the speaker, I mean, basically assumes that the girl, right, that's what he calls her, uh, would have been easy. It all basically would have been easy when they were young. Do you know what I mean? All of a sudden, we're not, we're not just talking about sexual ability. That's part of it. But we're talking about sexual access, I guess. Is it, I th maybe that's how, you know, you get what I'm saying, I think. Um, so we, we have the opportunity here to build that argument, add to it um, in a way. But we don't do it. Like we, the paragraph's over after that, right? Um, so there's a couple things you could do here. Again, number one, I would start in the text. I would not look at outside sources, please. Um, but number two, and I know I said this on a lot of your papers, think back to how we talk about these lines. I'm not saying you got to do it exactly how I did it. Um, I happen to be better at it than you. That's th that, That's how it should be. But I want to see you guys try. Dig into the language. Spend more time with these lines. We We make some cool observations in this paper, but we leave them behind almost immediately. What's what's the significance of this girl being a layup, right? What's the significance, if you want to talk about it, in the previous line of breaking on love, right? We talked about that in class. Um, any of that, any of that. You don't have to talk about all of it, but you got to talk about some of it. Um, doing that will give you fuller arguments, first of all, uh, but that will also offer you uh, great opportunities for better topic sentences, right? Because you want to sum up whatever that argument is, and it's a lot easier to do that when you actually have one. Um, that's, like I said, in general, uh, the, the bigger issues I saw with your papers, um, I used this uh, student example to highlight some of that stuff for you uh, one more time. This will be on course den, uh, and I don't know why I said that, because if you're watching it, you found it, so... You know, we're all dumb sometimes. Anyway, uh, hope you guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Thanks.